harrowing situation last night at the University of New Mexico where a violent mob tried to shut down our frequent guest and friend on the couch, Tommy Laren. Watch as they try to storm the doors at the auditorium where she was speaking. <laughs> Tommy, along with her dad and several members of the Turning Point USA campus chapter, had to barricade themselves in a kitchen for nearly an hour while campus police called in reinforcements from the local and state police. Tommy had this to say about her ordeal. It turned violent. Um, they started pushing the officers that were guarding the door, trying to bust in the door. Somebody pulled the fire alarm. Um, the alarms are going off everywhere. We're all basically barricaded in this room. Can't leave. Um, I was escorted away for my safety by officers. Um, then we heard reports of shots fired. Apparently no shots were fired, so thank goodness for that. University of New Mexico, um, Apparently they don't care. Um, they don't care that students' lives were endangered, uh, guests' lives were endangered. Like, never mind me, you do have your tuition paying students that were in that room to listen to a speaker um, and they were in danger. Lisa, I watched this whole thing. Tommy handled it so well. Uh, she was repeatedly telling the crowd, the Turning Point USA crowd, we're better than this, we're decent people, you know, no matter what happens, like, stay calm. They started chanting USA as these people at the door uh, were acting less than becoming. It's scary that this is the future generation. No, it's really scary, and she handled like a boss, and, and thank God she's okay. I can't imagine how scary that was for the people involved in it, but I, I can't help but feel like this is what the left wants. Mm -hmm. When you've got the president of the United States using a primetime address to label 75 million Americans as enemies of the state, when you have the Department of Homeland uh, Sec Security Secretary echoing those sentiments, the Vice President of the United States echoing those sentiments, uh, you know, when you've got Tim Ryan running for Senate in Ohio saying that we have to, what did he say? He said we have to uh, kill and confront MAGA supporters. When you've got Maisie Hirono calling and uh, doing a call to arms over the issue of abortion. And it's not just rhetoric either. I mean, we all remember the summer of death in 2020 when we saw dozens of people killed with the rioting that happened and Democrats sanctioning it, cheering it on. When you had congressional Republicans gunned down on the softball field, when you had a member of Congress, David Kustoff, ran off the road, he, he was run off the road over health care. Right. So, you know what, when Democrats try to call Republican extremists, you know, like, go fly kite. Yeah, no, that, that, that is such a comprehensive list, and there's even more. Lori Lightfoot had a similar call uh, over an issue. I think it was in the aftermath of Dobbs. But, Emily, you actually spoke to Tommy. What did she have to say about all this? I did, and just to, just to quickly um, underscore that, because there, there, isn't, there isn't a disconnect between rhetoric and behavior. That's the whole point of the left, and that's why it's terrifying, and that's why we see charges of attempted murder on a, on a Supreme Court justice and the like. That's why it's so terrifying when elected officials say there's going to be civil war quote, if something happens, if, if Republicans are voted into office in November. Um, so I chatted with Tommy, and first of all, my heart goes out to her. What an incredibly terrifying experience. No one should have to go through that. You're right, she acted with complete grace and aplomb during that undoubtedly horrible experience. And she said she underscored that message we saw earlier, which is the, her biggest message is that the University of New Mexico needs to be held accountable. They knew the protest was going to happen, she says, and when it began and people were trying to come in, they did nothing about it. And she also said that the thing that angers and terrifies her the most are those other students that she mentioned in that message. She said, I, I was taken away in an armored vehicle escorted by police. What about them? What about the other humans, students who have to be there day after day? And she said she doesn't know what happened to them. And that is what terrifies and angers her the most. It is scary. Dr. Siegel, we have a little bit more, just a few seconds of what happened. Look at how angry these protesters are. They're going after Tareem. I know. That was actually, um, I believe, at a separate university. But the, the video I was referencing, there are protesters at the door where they're shooting a bird. They're yelling the F word at the police officers at the door. Um, if you don't like an idea, fine. Use your words. Use your mind. Get your footnotes. Get your facts and argue your point. But yelling down a police officer, shutting down an event, no place for this. Mm -mm. First of all, you can see the, the, the fear on, on Tommy's face and how much she was put in danger and, and how she overcame it. And that's very inspiring. 
But this is maybe the biggest threat to America here that we have, that we can't have an exchange of ideas at a university. If you want to believe in your ideas, listen to the opposition. Listen to someone who disagrees with you and test your ideas out on those people. If you're not doing that, you're monolithic. And you know what that reminds me of? And I have family from there, the Soviet Union, where you weren't allowed to dissent. And we're heading in that direction because of the Democrats, because of their insistence of no debate. And that is what this is. And then it raises to the level of violence, which is another level up. Absolutely. Uh, the video we just watched, that was actually at the University of Buffalo uh, in the aftermath of an Allen West event when they were chasing down the person who had arranged the speaker, Kennedy. But I go back to this chart, and I do think it's a little instructive as to where we are today. Uh, and this is the breakdown of how people feel they can be friends and, and work for based on ideology. Um, Republicans, 5% said they couldn't be friends with a Democrat versus 37% of Democrats. 71% of Democrats wouldn't go on a date with a Republican, just 31% in the reverse. Reverse. And 30% of Democrats saying they wouldn't work for someone of a different ideology, 7% of Republicans. It does seem very strongly the intolerance goes towards the left. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, to your point, I think you make the best point of all. If you have a problem with what Tommy Lahren is going to say in her speech, then sit down, listen to it, you know, jot down some notes, and then during the Q&A, ask her something. Mm -hmm. Confront her there. But, you know, this idea, these are incredibly fascist techniques that they're using to try mm -hmm. and terrorize people into changing their behavior. That's exactly what they're doing. I don't want to live in a world that's run by people like that. Mm -hmm. You know, if I say something that offends you, that's going to be your reaction, a violent tantrum every time you're confronted with something that hurts your feelings. That's, that's a bad vision of the future. And, you know, at some point, these are going to be the people pushing our wheelchairs and you know, I want them to push oh me God, off the ship. Yeah, exactly. Isn't that you know, a horrible this thought? Also, yes. This yes. also happened to me, and, and by the way, it happens to all of us. I went to my own alma mater, and I was actually downsized to a different panel than I was supposed to get. And this was on a medical topic. This is pervasive uh, on all levels. Amazing. Yeah. We saw YouTube remove the video of Governor DeSantis with the doctors who were bringing up facts about, about COVID, real facts. Um, interesting. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.